Okay, so we are live right now. Hopefully there's no delay. It looks like it's okay on my end. Let me know what you are seeing. Potato Goron, good to see you. Let's get this thing rolling. We have uh, only three of you, but I think people will start to come in. So I think I know the problem, and I don't. hopefully we won't see this issue next time. There doesn't seem to be too much of a delay this time. So I think it had to do with the fact that I was trying to do it in 1440p, uh, 60 frames per second, which turns out that I'm not really sure. So it's good to see that there's no delay. Cameron, good to see you, my friend. Uh, yep, no delay here. So that's good. Welcome, everybody, back again. I'm sorry I had to have a few def def <laughs> technical difficulties to get tongue-tied there. Uh, got a new microphone here. This is the Shure SM7B, and it is um, a new microphone that I'm trying out right now. I was using the Rode Procaster from Rode, and so far it's looking, it sounds, I think it's sounding pretty good, but let me know, people. Uh, do me a favor, if you're watching, make sure you hit that like button. It helps get it spread out over YouTube, and it would also help build a channel as we get more interaction, more growth. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so. I got a lot of good stuff coming. I reached out to Lenovo, and Lenovo, uh, hopefully I should be getting the uh, ThinkPad uh, Z13, hopefully soon, and the 16. So that's going to be coming very soon. And also the um, the ThinkPad X13S, which is that, I believe that's, or is that, is that the one with the, uh, the brand new Snapdragon? So we'll see. Uh, I know Cameron likes them. But we're going to talk about, for now, we're going to talk about this. Uh, my one week using the Dell XPS 13 9320. It's the, 93, it's the Dell XPS 13 Plus. And I'm liking it so far, but not perfect like everything in life. There are some things we got to talk about, but for the most part, I really like it. Now, the design is pretty stunning here, as you can see, as we have uh, 28 of you filed in already. Um, and I got to say, and I, and I think Cameron, <laughs> I know you don't like this uh, device because I remember the comments you were leaving on the video, which is fine. You know, look, it's not for everybody. You know, you, sometimes you, you know, it, not everybody's going to please everybody. So it's uh, for the most part uh, doing very well on the channel. In fact, there's a lot of interest, you know, whether or not people are liking the device or they think it's too much of a, a of a compromise in terms of lack of 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, lack of ports for the most part, although you do get uh, the two Thunderbolt 4 ports uh, on this laptop, one on each side. And of course, one is being taken up when you're using this device. So I think there's a lot of um, controversy surrounding this and a lot of people are uh, criticizing it in a sense for the fact that, you know, they're trying to make a device here that's pretty minimalistic, uh, to say the least. And, um, and, I, and I think for the most part, uh, they've succeeded in the design here. Now, there are some problems that we need to talk about, and that is the lack of a function row. Now, it doesn't bother me personally. I know some people have not been happy with this. And by the way, this flashing is from the PWM that it uses or the pulse width modulation. In real life, this is static, so no worries there. Now, that, that is the PWM, Cameron. Now, the thing is with this is that this stays on all the time. In other words, when you're watching a movie, when you're doing anything with this, it's going to be always on. And when it's always on, you know, that could be a little bit annoying. It, you know, I'm not going to say to you that it's been perfect. I think it's okay. Now, uh, I did reach out to Dell, and I'm going to follow up with this, of course. I want to see if they can maybe do a firmware update that will um, ba basically allow you to maybe turn that off when you're watching a movie or what have you. And I think uh, that might be the solution here uh, when it comes to the Dell XPS 13 Plus. Now, there are two fans in this, okay? It does get a little hot. I want to say overly hot during uh, maximum load. But when I'm running this under the optimized mode or the regular mode, if you, for lack of a better term, and it's pretty good in terms of the thermals. It doesn't get overly hot in terms of the uh, surface temperatures, and I'll talk more about it in the upcoming video, but it definitely will get a little bit warm. There are two fans. I did open it up in the video, so you saw what you can upgrade, and that, of course, would be that uh, SSD. It's an M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSD, and really fast reads and writes on it. Now, 
I have 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, and I got to say, it's been working out pretty well. I don't really need to upgrade it just yet, but I do have that option, of course, down the road with the ability to swap it out and get more storage. So I like that. Now, having said that, um, the keyboard I'm absolutely loving so far. Now, this keyboard is another controversial feature, and I'm not really sure why, because although it does look like it might be very shallow and not very comfortable to type on, it is an edge-to-edge -edge keyboard. And I'll get to your comments and questions in a moment. It is an edge-to-edge -edge keyboard, and I think it's very comfortable to type on. And for the past week that I've been using it, it has been pretty comfortable. I have not had any issues in terms of the... Uh, being able to type comfortably, like if I'm doing a Word document, banging out an extended or long email, I've had no issues with this. And I've been using this as my main laptop for the past week. Now, the edge to edge keyboard's great. Now this deck, of course, and we'll get to the touchpad in a moment, this uh, haptic touchpad, but this deck over here, if I do have a criticism, is that these are a little bit sharp edges here. So when you're typing on it, and if I, I, can, sh short, I can show you here, your wrists will be resting against that. And I, w I don't want to say it's uncomfortable to the point where you can't do it, but I felt it. You know, I did feel it. So it's a little bit of, a, of an adjustment there. Uh, would have been nice to have a little bit more rounded edges. It's a little bit sharp there. And again, the design is stunning as far as I'm concerned. But from a practical standpoint, this does uh, get a little bit uncomfortable when you're doing it for quite a bit of time. Now, having said that, uh, I'm really liking this as far as this haptic touchpad. This has been working great, much better than I thought it would. Now, the haptic touchpad uh, occupies this area over here. It has a haptic engine, so it does give you um, a vibration or some feedback when you do click, and it's actually worked out pretty well so far. And I got to say, the responsiveness, the two-finger scrolling, the gestures all worked well. So really good job on that. So loving the keyboard, loving the design. And, and of course, you can see it here. Uh, this is the uh, platinum color, but it also comes in the graphite. And the thing with this is, of course, this will show less fingerprints, this uh, this. Um, platinum color but if i'm gonna get the graphite in and i think i will because i spoke to my contact at dell hopefully i'll get that graphite model in we can compare the two we'll see how the fingerprints is and that and so forth so let's uh let's take some of your qu comments and questions let's start from the beginning here because i know i missed a few people um the the pwm is there but again in real life you do not notice it you'll notice it on my camera here so it's not an issue uh, is the XPS lacking ports? So I did mention it, right. So there are two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one on each side. One is used to charge. So when it is charging, you only have one. Now, the, 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 the saving grace here, of course, is the fact that you do get uh, Thunderbolt 4. So what does that mean? Well, you can, con you can connect to Thunderbolt docks, with, which will have a multitude of, of ports and connections. Uh, external GPUs are an option with this. And of course, you could connect multiple monitors, whether it be 4K, you can connect an 8K monitor to this. You're not going to have any issues. Now, having said that, what we do lose here is a headphone jack. You do lose a micro SD card reader like we got on the 9310. And you don't have any USB-A port, but of course, you didn't have that last time either. But having Thunderbolt 4 does make up the difference in a lot of ways. Now, I'm not going to bash them too much on the lack of ports here for the simple fact that for the way I use this, and I think a lot of people are going to use this, that's not going to be too much of an issue. And again, you could always get a Thunderbolt dock when you're in your office or you're docking at home. You don't need to have all the ports on the device, but you do have that ability through that Thunderbolt 4 ports. So that's going to be pretty good. Now, the other thing, and um, as the commenter here is saying, there's no sw switch for the webcam. There's no webcam shutter. And I, I talked about in that in my unboxing and first look video. And that would have been nice to have on it. We didn't have it last time. We don't have it here. Now, according to Cameron, I didn't expect it to beat AMD or AMD Silicon, but is this battery life particularly bad? So let's talk about the battery life. But before we that, he's saying AMD has USB 4 support, which is Thunderbolt 3 minus royalties to Intel. So that's a good point. So uh, let's start off with the fact that the scores I got, now it definitely beats out the new M2 
uh, MacBook Pro that I've been seeing some of the results of the Geekbench test. This definitely did better. This did over 9,000 on the multi-core. The mo they did, I think, 7,000 or 8,000 and change. So this definitely outpaced that. But I think the M2 MacBook Pro did a little bit higher on the single core. I got a little bit over 1,600, close to 1,700 on my latest test. That one, I think, did 18 or maybe 1,900. I'm not sure. But again, where you're going to see the benefit of this is the multi-core scoring about 9,200 on my last test. Um, you will notice some thermal throttling, and I'll talk about this in my upcoming full review. It will throttle under um, load, but it's not too bad. And i actually getting good sustained workloads on this. And I ran the Cinebench R23, and I'll talk about it in the full review. But yes, Cameron, over 9,000. Um, and we can look at it in the video when I show it to you, but it's obviously very good when it comes to multi-core performance. Now this has the core I seven, uh, this has the core I seven, uh, what is it? The 1260 P. So this is a 28 watt CPU. It has 12 cores. It has, uh, eight efficiency cores and four performance cores. And you know, of course, that's going to help out hopefully with the battery life and all that. Now, having said that, I know Cameron, you asked about the battery life. I showed you in my unboxing video, I got about seven hours and 15 minutes, give or take a few minutes on my continuous web surfing test. Now, keep in mind one thing. This is the OLED display right here. The OLED display will use more battery life than the IPS options that are offered on this. And now having said that, if you go with the Full HD+, Plus, which is also a touch display, or the 4K UHD+, Plus, a touch display on this, IPS, you're going to get about an hour to two hours more than this one, maybe even more, especially with that Full HD model, less pixels to push, and of course, not being an OLED, meaning you'll do a little bit better. Having said that, the um, battery life I got on this, like I said, is the seven hours and 14 minutes. That's continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. What does that translate to? I've been seeing about five to six hours of mixed use depending on what you're doing. So uh, just keep that in mind. Now, the benefits of the OLED display, and I showed you a little bit in that unboxing and first look video, is the fact you're getting the excellent, excellent coverage of the color gamut. You're getting the really color accurate display here. It's gonna be better than the IPS. You get the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, and of course, the high contrast. Good to see digital slang here, my friend. How are you? Um, glad you were able to join us tonight. Everybody check out Digital Slang's channel. He's got some great live streams, great videos. Uh, good to see you. I hope you are doing well. Is the Full HD non-touch screen mat. So Dominic, I think we went over it last time. That Full HD Plus on this XPS 13 Plus is a touch display. And is it matte? No, I think all three of these are going to be glossy, although there is an anti-reflect coating on it. You will notice some glare and reflections as I wave my hand on it. And yes, the um, Kamen is correct. The OLED does burn through battery life. But if you use a dark background or a black background, it certainly helps the uh, save a little bit more battery life. But I think overall, you're going to do better in terms of battery life with the full HD plus or the UHD plus or 4K plus, which are IPS. So you do have some options when it comes to battery life on this, but as a content creator, as somebody who likes to have the OLED, I'm a big fan and big proponent of OLED. I think this one is really, really special. It's a great display. Now it measures 400 nits in terms of the brightness. So it's certainly bright enough. I have no issues, but I think the IPS versions, the both the full HD plus and the UHD plus are rated at 500 nits, so it's even brighter. And I think Dell does a spectacular job when it comes to the IPS displays as well. Uh, based on some of my usage in the past models, I would have no hesitation recommending, especially if you want better battery life of going with the IPS models. Would you recommend this over the HP Spectre? Well, so here's the thing. This is not a two-in-one convertible. The HP Spectre X360 14, which would be the closest to this, would be an excellent choice. But I'm going to look forward to the refreshed models here for 2022 before I give judgment. So let's hold off on that. Um, let's see what else Cameron has to say. Thank you, AMD, Apple, for pushing efficiency. Great to have competition in the CPU space. Just wish Dell would give lit guess, Give li less lip service to AMD, but because Dell loves Intel. So I've talked to Dell, Cameron. I've actually mentioned this when I met with them in New York back in January. Is there any way we can see an AMD variant on the XPS line? And they didn't say no, which, 
you know, of course, means nothing at this point. But uh, they didn't say uh, no and they didn't say yes. They were very um, coy about it. And then they leave all their options open, as they say. So hopefully they will uh, have one. Will I, would I think we're going to see one? I don't think so right away. Not a, and, and I think one of the reasons, I, and I don't know if this is a legitimate reason, but I think it has to do with the Thunderbolt 4. They're not having the Thunderbolt 4. And I think certain other things of, that come with the Intel processor. But again, they have a deal with Intel, I'm sure. And that's why they're not doing it. But there you go. So I think 13 inches, 1920 by 1200 is more than enough. And that was my next point, actually. So if you go with that full HD plus IPS display, 1920 by 1200, 16 to 10, most people will be perfectly fine with that. Now, the reason I chose the OLED model, which you have, which you see here, with its higher resolution, um, and I can give you the two right now, is because it does have better coverage of the color gamut, and it does have more color accuracy. This is 3456 by 2160. Now, the other thing that you will not get on this, and I mentioned it, I think I mentioned it last live stream, you don't get a higher refresh rate uh, option on this, uh, neither do you get on the 15 or the 17 either, uh, which would have been nice. Now, 90 hertz refresh rate or maybe even 120 would, of course, take away more battery life. But at the same time, we should have that option. And I pretty much would would anticipate that being the case next year. But we didn't see it this year, just for those that are wondering. So uh, right now we're uh, 16 minutes into the live stream. I want to say hello to everybody. Good to see everybody once again. My one week follow up with the Dell XPS 13 plus 9320, which you see here, is um, actually worked out pretty well. Now it's not cheap, as I told you. It's starting price of about uh, what was it? What did we say last time? 13, 1400 dollars with the Core i5 model. But of course, if you go to the Core i7, you go up to more RAM and more storage, you're going to pay more. I paid $19.99 with tax here in Nevada. It came into over $2,100. Certainly not cheap. And you are paying for a lot of the aesthetics here. It is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous here. And I'm loving it. According to Dave Hagen, I'm assuming some people who like this design would like it with a larger display. Do you think Dell will expand the design language to its larger XPS notebooks in the future? And that is a very good question, Dave. Uh, the truth is I'm not sure because I think they, this is the first time we're seeing this design. There is a chance we couldn't see it, uh, coming up, I would imagine, but I'm not really sure if Dell is going to do it to the others. I guess they're waiting to see what the, um, the reception has been to this design and then they can pretty much, uh, look to see if they can expand it out to either the XPS 15 or to the 17. No problem, Cameron. And I know <laughs> you killed me, man. <laughs> uh, if For those that don't know, I did my first video on this. I did the XPS 13 Plus um, unboxing first look video. And by the way, we're approaching over 30,000 views already. On the XPS 15, I'm already over 60,000, pushing 65,000. So very, very good interest in it. A lot of controversy, obviously, with this design. But uh, for the most part, I'm liking it. I did mention, again, a little bit uncomfortable with that I've been using it for the week and what's really stuck out to me is it's a little sharp here when I'm typing not a deal breaker by any stretch so I want to make that very clear but it is definitely something that I noticed now and it's only really I noticed it with the um with the uh, extended periods of time but really when I'm not you know, I'm watching a movie or anything I'm not really uh, affected by it and this haptic touch engine's working out pretty well and again, like, like I said, it may not be for everybody, but for those that are big, heavy fans into the XPS line and those who like a sleek design and want this display and want this to, this sleek looks, and I think you can't go wrong. I mean, I'm really liking it. Now, it is expensive, but it is a flagship at the end of the day, so you really can't, uh, you can't fault them. I mean, it's priced competitively. If you're looking at Apple stuff, um, it's not out of the realm here in terms of the pricing. And the other thing is I, I ordered mine on May 4th and I talked about it last time in the last live stream last week. And I, it took six weeks exactly to get it from the time I ordered it to the time I got it delivered. I was hoping to get it sooner. If you didn't check that out, I'll leave a link when we're done. Uh, the little saga I had with FedEx, which really screwed the pooch on this. Uh, more, Not really Dell, but more so FedEx. And Dell, by the way, to their credit, as I mentioned last time, they 
uh, credited me $100. They took $100 off the price for my troubles. If you didn't see that, check it out. Good to see Mallory. How are you? Good to see you again. I'm glad you could join us. The XPS series is really becoming Mac and Windows world, in my opinion. So a lot of people, and I noticed a lot of the comments on the video, and again, it's doing very well, is and showing there's a lot of interest. A lot of people were trying to compare this to, say, the M1 or the M2 uh, MacBook Air. Now, here's the thing, and this is my personal take on it. I'm looking forward to testing out the M2 Air. I, I think they made a lot of great decisions there. But aesthetically, I, I like the way this looks. This is a pretty stunning laptop. There's no uh, notch on the top here. Uh, it's a pretty stunning design, if you ask me. Um, this has a 55 watt uh, battery. And as I mentioned earlier, I got seven hours and 14 minutes on my continuous web surfing test, five to six hours mixed use, depending on what you're doing. Um, he couldn't see it flickering. So any, again, people that are asking, is this flickering in real life? And I, and I keep harping on this because I'm getting a lot of questions on it. No, it is not. It is PWM or pulse width modulation. It is picked up only by the camera. And the, this, this is a static bar. So this will always be on. And one of the things I would like to see in a firmware update is an ability to turn it off, especially when you're consuming media, watching uh, Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. Yeah, it does look clean. It's a definitely a minimalist, clean look. It's a stunning look, in my opinion. Simply stunning is what I said. I think I called the video. Uh, it does have a great look. And as far as the battery is concerned, I don't think they could have gone any bigger in terms of the battery, Cameron, because of the design. And one of the reasons, by the way, they said they added this capacitive row as opposed to physical keys uh, take it for what it's worth, this is what they told us, is that it's to allow for better cooling, better efficiency. And I'm going to talk more about this in the upcoming uh, full review. But um, I, I think this has got some pretty good efficiency on it. However, that OLED display will eat battery life. So I don't have an IPS version here, either the Full HD Plus or the UHD Plus, to, to see the difference between the two. Uh, I would imagine as far as battery life with this 55 watt hour battery, you're going to get about two to three more hours at least on the Full HD Plus, maybe an hour to two hours maybe on the 4K. I don't know. I don't have them yet, but there you go. And good to see our good buddy, Robert. How are you, my friend? It's been a while, been traveling a lot, I'm sure, and you've missed my live streams, but I'm glad to say, glad to see you here, my friend. Yes, we're looking at the XPS 13 Plus. Very, very cool stuff. Um, and if Asus can do it, yeah. So what you're talking about, and again, I'm, maybe I missed the comments in the chat, but I'll try to catch up. But the Asus uh, ZenBook Pro Duo, and hopefully I'll get the newest version into the studio to check out, that has two displays and stuff like that with the two screens. Um, so, I, you know, look, the bottom line is uh, these were controversial moves, obviously, but they wanted a better headway in terms of the thermals and the thermal envelope. And apparently that's made a big difference to them. They were able to put in a 55 watt hour battery. I believe it's bigger than last year. And again, I'm not seeing outstanding battery life, but again, OLED displays, I never, I have never really seen outstanding battery life. So there you go. Uh, the Flow X13 and not the ZenBook, uh, so we're trying to figure out what's going on here. XPS 13 specs are good, but the same price you can get an X, oh, the Asus X13 and the 3050i and good battery life. By the way, I have my full review on that pretty much ready to go. I know I'm behind on that. I love that device, by the way. It's been pretty good. Oh, we got our first super chat and oh no, once again, oh my God, guess who? Let's add it to the thing. So Robert with $100 super chat unbelievable wow so thank you so much robert really really yeah i know right, right randy unbelievable he's been a tremendous supporter for the last couple of years on the channel i gotta say i tip my hat to him yeah he's been amazing 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 again for those that want to give super chat super stickers memberships help on a day uh, on a monthly basis and super thanks when the video is over on the replay if you want to give a little thank you or whatever just to show appreciation or you don't have to it's not required uh just watching give me the watch time is great but i want to thank robert once again uh for being such a tremendous supporter of the channel and hopefully we'll, we'll link up one day and go have a drink somewhere uh just hang out it'll be great so yeah i agree this has been he's been amazing 
so generous, but you deserve it. Thank you. I appreciate that uh, pine to pine three. Yeah, I know, Mallory. Robert's always so incredibly generous. Thank you for the support to the channel. I, I appreciate that, uh, Mallory. Yeah, Robert's been amazing. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, so getting back to what we were saying, and thanks to Robert's generosity, we can get back on track here. The uh, XPS 13 Plus, to me, is... Uh, if you're if you love the XPS line, which I do, I'm a big fan of it. I like the way it looks, just the overall aesthetics. I love the displays, love, love, love the displays. Uh, it's for me. It's the type of thing I like to carry with me to a coffee shop, take on an airplane, or use in a hotel. To me, this is the way to go. I can see an executive, a CEO, uh, whipping this out basically in a meeting, and it'll look great. It's just you know you're in your suit. You're going to look great with this. Now, having said that, not perfect, like I said, a little bit sharp edges. You know, we just took a look at about a couple of months back, the Lenovo Yoga 9i, that 14 inch with the rounded corners, really good. Uh, I really like that as well. That's one of my favorites this year. Uh, and this is really sleek looking, but a little sharp in terms of the edges. You could see it here and you could sort of see it there. Um, if I put it to this camera here, it does dig into your wrist a little bit over there, um, right there. So yeah, it's not the most comfortable, but it's not a deal breaker either. I just wanted to bring that up. You like that coming up, right? Let me give it one from to India. This is for my people in India. Coming up. There you go. All right. <laughs> so good to see everybody. We have 95 of you watching. Let's see if we could break 100 again. We broke it last month, last week rather. Uh, we got 93 of you, 29 likes with 93 people watching. Hey, people, hit that thumbs up. Let's help this get spread out of YouTube. If you're noticing, I got a new microphone here. I, I mentioned it earlier. Uh, this is the Shure SM7B, a very popular one. I'm going to use this for now on, I think. Let me know how it sounds. Um, I like it, but I'm going to see if it will replace my Procaster from Rode. But so far, it's looking pretty good. Um, and good to see Jeremy Totter here. It's been a while. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, oh, my God, you're battling COVID. Hopefully, the recovery is going to go smoothly. But still decided to tune in. And well, I'm, hopefully I could take your mind off the COVID a little bit, but I know that's going to be hard. I prefer the new XPS 15 over the 13 Plus. The battery life on the 15 is much better than the 13 Plus. Now, for those that are wondering, and thank you, Jeremy, hope you are going to feel better. Um, the XPS 15 9520, I reviewed that on my channel. It, it's got over pushing 65,000, I think, right now. We're going to head in into 100,000, hopefully, on that video. Doing very well. Not a revolutionary upgrade in terms of the design. Design, but everything internally, or for the most part internally, we now only got the 12th gen processor, 8 series processor, uh, but they still have the 3050 Ti in that one. I also did the XPS 17 9720, and uh, that was really good also. We're poaching 20,000 views on that as well. I appreciate that, Mallory. Uh, I try to do my best. I know it's I'm a one-man band. I do my best, but I certainly appreciate when people are recognizing my hard work because I'm doing it because I'm doing it for you guys. And I'm also doing it because I love to do it. And this is uh, something I have a lot of passion for. So thank you. I appreciate it. For those joining us late, um, the 93 of you watching, I did have a little bit once again, second week in a row. And I think we can't do the 1440p anymore. I don't know if YouTube did anything on their al their back end, not their algorithm, but their back end that is now preventing me from going higher than 1080p 60, which is what I think it's doing right now. But no matter, uh, we'll stick to the 1080p next time just to make sure. Hopefully I can get some fiber into this uh, line so I can get some symmetry on the uploads and downloads. Um, will I be getting, according to Joey Beretta, will I be getting the ThinkPad X1 Nano Gen 2 in for review? They went from a 9-watt processor to the 28-watt P-Series, which is what we have on here. And yes, I will be getting it um, as soon as Dell sends it. Um, I'm, so, I'm sorry, <laughs> as soon as Lenovo sends it. Now, the other thing, by the way, I, um, is I spoke to Lenovo. I don't know if anybody joined me late. I will be hopefully getting the ThinkPad Z13 and hopefully the 16 very soon that has the amd processor 6000 processor and i also hopefully will get that new snapdragon version that thinkpad 
uh, what was it? The X13 Gen 1 or whatever, whatever. I just don't remember the name anymore. But anyway, it's the, with the new Snapdragon Windows and ARM. We'll see how it does. It, I got a little bit of hands-on time with it when I went to New York to visit with Lenovo. Looks good. So we'll see. Again, we'll see about performance and see if uh, Windows and ARM has made any progress, which I think it has. All right. Excited about the Asus Fold 17 whenever it comes out. Yeah, I would love to get my hands on that. Uh, hopefully I will. Uh, what about the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 10? That's coming very soon. I spoke to Lenovo. Hopefully by next week I'll have that. So stay, stay tuned. I just did one. I think I did the X1, uh, the Yoga X, the X1 Yoga Gen 7, which I'm finalizing a full review on. But I did an, a first look, which is pretty extensive as well. Um, performance wasn't so great on that i think it had to do with the fact they went with a u processor uh we'll talk more about that soon and i don't know i can't wait to get in the x1 carbon gen 10 we'll see how that's all gonna go all right so so my overall takeaway so far and again i still have to release my full review on it so i'm going to save some stuff for that but I'm really liking the XPS 13 Plus. I think the design is a bold design. It's controversial in some manner, but it depends on who is going to use this and for what purposes you're going to use this. Now, would I do video editing on this? Uh, probably not. Would I do some Photoshop? Yes, I would do some light video editing, maybe 1080p, but I wouldn't do 4K. Not that it couldn't handle it, or I would use something with a bigger display and with a discrete GPU. But having said that, great travel device. It is expensive. Uh, for the one I have here, of course, two thousand dollars is nothing to sneeze at, and it it's definitely a premium priced uh, device, of course, no doubt because it's a flagship. But it's definitely something that I I really gravitate towards. I think the design is very pleasing. I love the keyboard, and I'm thinking the haptic engine on this has been very very good. The only thing I would change is this capacitive row allow you to turn it off when you're consuming media. Uh, other than that, it actually works out pretty well as far as uh, the responsiveness of it. I have not had any issues with it. Um, how does the charger look? I, I, I showed it in the video. It's very small. It's a 60-watt charger up from the 45 from last year. And I thought it was very easy to take with me, put it in your bag or you know travel with. Again, I think if you want better battery life and you don't want to have to carry that around, I think you're going to do much better on that full HD plus IPS, which is supposedly gorgeous in its own right, or go with the 4K IPS. I'm not sure battery life on that. I would imagine they both do better than this one, which I got seven hours and 14 minutes on my continue, continuous web serving test, five to six hours of mixed use. So you will have to take your charger with you. 28 watts versus 15. So this actually is a 28 watt and it's definitely i noticed the difference in the performance and again like i said and we can show you here is with the screenshots um we got some pretty good scores on this a 91 24 uh on the multi-core 1592 but i actually re-ran the test uh recently got over 1600 uh I think 1650 maybe and then then I got about 8900 it just varied a few times but this is pretty much what you're going to see and then I think I did another one here let me see this one got 8982 and 1692 so very close 1692 is here very close to the uh 1700 so you know it's a very nice increase in terms of the last year the 9310 in terms especially in the multi-core performance but also the single core a little bit more in the single core but not much and then of course it has iris xe graphics which are not going to blow anybody away in terms of AAA gaming 4k video editing not really what this is designed to do, but there you go. So, uh, yes, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that, NS. And then we got, I'm going to try to get to people's comments. I'm just bouncing around here. Thank you for the review and amazing work. I'm in the previous review, Dell XPS 13 Plus outforms the M1 MacBook Pro 13. Yes, I think it definitely outperforms that. How is it comparable against the M2 MacBook Pro 13? Uh, from the, the from the ones that I've seen, as far as the Geekbench and stuff like that, this is a much this has a better multi-core performance. This has over 91 or almost 9200 that I got in the last test. Uh, that one got. Um, 
I think the, what I saw, some videos and some people have been running tests, I think the 8,500 mark, maybe the 8,200, something like that, but definitely was less than this when I saw that. It did better in the single core, which is important, of course, for everyday use, but not much better. I think it's pretty comparable in some ways. So, you know, you just have to see. But of course, where you're going to be benefiting on that MacBook Pro is going to be the battery life. You expect to get better battery life out of that one. Um, does it come in space gray? Actually, this comes in graphite, which is a really nice color. Uh, I showed in the video the two colors, so if you didn't check it out, uh, no, it does come in. <laughs> but I actually like this platinum for the simple reason I think it's just going to show uh, less fingerprints. So there you go. All right, we have 87 of you watching. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> Let me get some water here. But good to see everybody uh, showing up for these videos. And not only showing up for the videos, showing up for the live stream. So it shows me that there is interest in this. Is it scratch resistant? Yeah, you know, so far I noticed um, it hasn't been too bad. I've been very careful with it, of course, because I did scratch my uh, 9310 and the 9510 from last year. So I've been trying to be a little bit more careful. But as far as this glass um, deck here, this is glass over here, uh, really, and that's over here as well. Uh, really, really durable so far. It must be some sort of Gorilla Glass, I guess. Does it get warm in use? Yes, it does get warm under heavy load. Right now, it's almost cool to the touch. There's no, it's it's not heated up, but I'm not really doing anything on it. Uh, when you do put it in performance or ultra performance mode, I should say, you will notice it does get a little bit warm and I'll talk about it in the video and it will throttle down a, a little bit, but again, I need to do my full testing on it but it had pretty good sustained load. So I'm not really disappointed. The performance has been good, shown by the numbers, over 9,000 on the on the uh, Geekbench multi-core score, so it's been very good. How is the battery life versus the MacBook Pro M1? I think the M1 is gonna do better, obviously, because this is using an OLED display, not a, um, what are they using? A mini LED or whatever they're using. Uh, this is an OLED display. And traditionally, we've seen historically, of course, that OLED displays tend to use more uh tend to use more battery power because of the pixels. And obviously it has to light up the individual pixels. It's black and if it wants to light up white, it lights it up white. So you have to understand if you use a black background, you'll do better or dark background, you'll do better in terms of the battery performance. But for the most part, you're gonna do better on IPS, that's for sure. Best Windows laptop for college. It just depends on your budget. There's so many out there. There are really good stuff coming out, people. Uh, it's just a matter of what, personal preference, whatever you might like. All right, how is the charger? I talked about that. Let me just go back a little bit so I don't want to miss anything. Again, we want to thank Robert for that really generous super chat. Anybody else want to give a super chat? It certainly helps out. I had to shell out 2,000 bucks, my friends, to get this. Um, so that's been pretty good. The dis that display, according to Tom, looks really thin. Can you show on edge? So it is very thin. And let me see here. So you can see here, this is a very thin, and by the way, it's a touch display. Well, I'll show you in a moment, but it's a very thin, and this is how far back, by the way, it goes, like that. So it doesn't go, it's not 180 degrees or anything like that, but it goes back far like that. And it's actually pretty good hinge, actually. It hasn't been loose or anything. Uh, it's been pretty good. Now, according to Hassan, the XPS 13 Plus, the power consumption is 2.6 watts for the Full HD Plus, 5 watts for the UHD Plus, and 7 watts for the OLED. That's a very helpful uh, comment here because it does show you you will get better battery life on the Full HD Plus or the UHD Plus, as I mentioned earlier. Now, I got 7 hours and 14 minutes on my continuous web surfing test, so you're looking at about 5 to 6 hours on mixed use. I would add another couple of hours, maybe 3 hours even, on that Full HD Plus. I would add another hour to 2 hours on the UHD Plus, depending on what you're doing. Again, I have to stress this, everybody's use case is a little bit different, so your mileage may vary. Uh, XPS or ThinkPad are both kings. Uh, <laughs> Well, I like them both. I'm a huge fan of the ThinkPad. And we're going to, you know, I'm doing a lot of Dell right now. And I have the Inspiron 14 for those that are interested. But I have all that stuff coming from Lenovo. And let's not sleep on HP. We got all that stuff coming as well. So uh, as soon as I get all that in, of course, I'll do the videos on them. Uh, a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. 
I see, I kind of see having trouble finding a Windows laptop for college because there's so many. Yeah, and that's the other thing with Macs, right? They're very limited in terms of what you can choose because they do that for you. They say, well, here, you buy the Air, the MacBook Pro, or the Mac Mini. Well, they do have quite a bit of SKUs now, but they, but you know, Windows has a lot more to choose from in terms of the different brands and the different SKUs of everything. Uh, so you got a lot more choice with the Windows. I really wish Dell would dress up uh, the cover a little bit. The logo could be improved, just maybe something a little bit different. I've talked about that in the past, and I think one of the things that I would love to see is use the XPS logo that we get here, or it's upside down right now but because I have the, the plugged in. But this is the XPS logo. It actually looks pretty nice. You can see it here. And I would actually prefer that logo than the one they put on the lid. And it would look a lot better. And it got a little bit dirty. But yeah, this would this would this should need to be changed. This is something I would recommend in the next version. Not a huge deal, but I would prefer to see the XPS logo on that lid. Let me know what you think, people. Hey, right, you agree, Robert. Yeah, so that, that, that would be the logo that I would want to have on that. Now, this doesn't bother me. I know it bothers some people, but one of the things you could do, and I know I just saw a video from dbrand. They now have skins for this, so they're not an affiliate of mine, but if dbrand wants to throw some money my way, I will certainly pimp their, their product and I hawk their product on my channel. But uh, if you, all kidding aside, if you want to get a skin, they are available at dbrand. So that might be something to consider if you're not liking the logo. You can just get something that covers it maybe. I don't know. Maybe they have a way to do that. Uh, I know they have ones where cutouts for the logo, but I know some people don't like the logo. But to me, that's not a huge deal. It's just something that you can sexy it up a bit, as Robert says here. I agree. So um, let's see what other comments. Uh, get Linus a skin. Haha, <laughs> go D brand. <laughs> yeah, Linus from Linus Tech, or whatever, in Canada, they, he loves to... Uh, really push that D brand stuff. And I'm sure he's making a lot of money through that. That's okay. Good God, God bless him. Good for him. In terms of quality, if the MacBook Pro is a 10, where would you rank the XPS? So far, the build has been great, uh, Lloyd. Um, I would give the build of this a 10 so far, but as far as quality control, I haven't had any issues, but there have been some comments and I should, in all fairness, point this out. I have noticed some comments, whether they're true or not, I don't know, because I, I don't have any way to verify it, but people have saying, one person said there was a they received their device and the display was coming off, the panel was coming out of the of the frame. I don't under, really, I don't understand how that would happen. I guess it's the glue or something. I don't know. And again, I cannot verify this, but you know, I got one comment like that. And then another person has already returned his because he had some issues with the display. I don't know if uh, in, in China they had to rush these out. I don't know. Mine has been perfect. And again, I bought this retail, so Dell did not send me this. So I bought it just like anybody else. Is there any features missing or added compared to the Surface Laptop Studio? So I reviewed the Surface Laptop Studio, of course, as people know, and I liked it, although I wasn't, there was some issues that I had with it, but for the most part, I liked it. And now, what, what would I say? Um, this is a better display. It's less glossy than the one you get on the Surface Laptop Studio, although one of the things that I liked on the Surface Laptop Studio that you don't get on this is the higher refresh rate or the dynamic refresh rate that it has that it has now. I think you get up to 120 in terms of the hertz, but this is 60 hertz. Now, is that a big deal? No, because you're going to take a hit on the battery, of course, so that is one thing that I don't have to worry about, but it would be nice to have the option to turn it on to, you know, I would imagine maybe next year we might see something like that, but you never know. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, according to Jordan, uh, his he loves my, his laptop. My fiance was using it and heard some loud rumbling. Don't even know how to describe it. It hasn't happened since though. So that that's a little concerning. <laughs> Hopefully it's not a big deal, uh, but it's uh, does that, you shouldn't have any of those kind of noises. Anything can have occasional defects, usually not a big deal. So, and again, that's a good point. So I have not had the issues that some people may have had. I, again, I don't know. But they're using a lot of interesting technology on this. They're going with this haptic engine touchpad. But so far, it's been perfect. I have not had any issues with it. It's been very, very responsive. The haptic engine works well. It feels like I'm real clicks here. It gets a little vibra vibration. Uh, when you do click on it, it works really well. 
Now, this capacitive row, and as I mentioned earlier, for those that are joining late, what I would like to see, and it's not, it doesn't flash in real life for those that are wondering, what I'd like to see is a, an ability to turn it off, say, when you're watching a movie or any kind of consumption of media, because it, it's a little bit, not annoying, but it would be nice to be able to turn that off. Now, I don't know if I, they can do that through a firmware. I could imagine they could. So maybe that will be coming down the road. I'll talk to Dell about it in, in more length. And if I hear anything, I'll let everybody know. Great to see you, Robert. Uh, thanks again for stopping by and that really great, generous super, ch super chat. So thank you so much. We'll speak soon. Take care, my friend. Thank you, Robert, once again. Uh no problem. Gaming, 3050 Ti and good battery life and touchscreen and the 15 keyboard as it is 16 to 10. So what he's talking about is the Dell XPS 15. I actually have it here. Hold on. So this is the Dell XPS 15. And for those that want to get a, an idea between the size difference between the two, this obviously is a 13.4 inch device. This is a 15. And you can see it here. You can see the difference. This also is OLED. So these are the same OLED displays, just bigger on this one. Same resolution, 34, 50, 30, what is it? 30, well, I forget what it is. It is, and they have the same resolution, I believe. This is 3456 by 2160. It's a both 16 to 10. So you can see the bigger brother here. Now, this has the carbon fiber deck. This will show more fingerprints uh, as you use it, although not as bad as in previous models. This has actually been pretty good. Uh, this one shows hardly any. I have not seen any fingerprints on this. Well, that's one of the reasons I went with this Platinum model, although they do have a gorgeous graphite model. Hopefully, Dell will send me a review unit to check out so we can see the difference in colors and whether or not this is definitely better in terms of... I could pretty much uh, anticipate this is going to be better as far as fingerprints are concerned. No, Aces X13. Um, I have the Flow X13. I will be, Randy, that video will be dropping next day. I promise. I know I've been promising that. I got a little bit behind. I was hoping to get, and the reason I didn't do that one, and like a little bit behind the scenes, I was hoping to get from Asus the external GPU. I forgot the name of it off the top of my head, but the one that attaches to the X13 Flow. And I wanted to wait for that. I was supposed to get it. They got delayed. So I'm just going to go out with my full review and see if we can just update it later because that was one of the reasons I didn't. Uh, Asus 13 is overkill for me. Yeah, so a lot of people don't need all that extra stuff. I understand that. It's called the XG Mobile. Thank you, Cameron. I had a little bit of an old age uh, situation here. <laughs> so yes, the uh, XG Mobile. And they were supposed to send me one. And I don't know, I got to follow up. But I'm just going to do my full review without it. I can do my research on some of the numbers from some other reviews, and that might be suffice to do it that way. Um, so there you go. I feel that Dell, according to Lee Goldstein, I, I, Dell is in general overpriced on their laptops. Awesome build quality though, but when I look at the new Samsung Galaxy Book 2 and the Book 2 360, it seems Dell's charging too much. You know, that's a good point. Um, these are expensive devices, and I did mention that, uh, Lee. But here's the thing that I think people need to understand. The build quality on this, I think, is better than the Samsung Galaxy Books in general. The, the, this, I think, is a, a better build. And the other thing is one of my biggest complaints on the Samsung Galaxy Books that have been recently released is that they're only 1080p. Now, only 1080p would be nice for a higher option. But again, of course, they don't, they're don't. they going to have problems with battery life, of course, too, since they're using that Super AMOLED technology. So... Uh, I think I like this one better than the Galaxies, but then again, uh, the other thing is, and this was my other complaint, thank you for bringing that up, Jordan, 16 to 10 is what I like, or even 3 to 2, which I love, uh, but 16 to 9, I think just at this point is outdated. Now, um, with the exception of gaming and with the exception of consuming media that is uh, optimized for 16 to 9, for the most part, I think 16 to 10 is the way to go, or even 3 to 2. I've got some laptops from HP, 3 to 2 we're going to talk about very soon. Yeah, I don't like 16 to 9. I think we've pretty much moved on from that, except for Samsung. They have not moved on from that. Uh, do not buy this price at full price, according to Potato Gorin. Dell's pricing is ridiculous. They are consistent discounts almost every month. and can extra 10% off just for signing up for the Dell newsletter. That's a great point. Yes, they're constantly running sales. So just keep your eye on the link in the description below. I do have links for it. 
uh, for both not only for the 13 but also for the 15 and 17 that we've uh, that I've reviewed and I'm going to hopefully get the Del the new XPS 13 93 15 which I have my issues on as well, but I haven't used it yet. Uh, one of the things I'm not crazy about, and again, I'll try to get a review unit in, that one's gonna have soldered RAM and soldered SSD, from what I understand. It's gonna be on board. So that's, that's not gonna be upgradable. So new colors on that as well. So we're gonna check those all out, hopefully, very soon. What's the difference, according to CL, between three to two and 16 to 10? So uh, you can see these are 16 to 10. They're a little bit taller, right, than a 16 to nine. And so you're gonna get a little bit of black bars on the top and the bottom. Three to two, and I do have one here. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I do have a three to two here, and I can bring it on. And it's a laptop that I'm actually going to be reviewing uh, and maybe get a little sneak peek of it. Just give me a second. Okay, so this is a three to two and we're gonna bring it on to here. Let me push these a little bit back further. So this is the new Dragonfly, the Elite Dragonfly. Don't get too excited. It is a Chromebook, but it is the best Chromebook I've ever seen. This is the new Dragonfly from the Elite, uh, from HP, obviously. So this is going to be running a 12th gen processor here. And this is actually one of the best Chromebooks I've ever used. In fact, I've been trying to, I'm going to might run parallels on this to run Windows on it. That's how much I love it. Three to two is taller. We got a really good super chat here. Wow, 99.99 from Jordan. That is amazing. Holy, you know what? Wow, thank you, my friend. That's two super chats today. One from Robert, one from uh, Jordan for $100 each. Wow, that is just amazing. Jordan, I appreciate it. So this is the... Um, the HP Dragonfly, Elite Dragonfly Chromebook. And then, you know, Chromebooks have come a long way. I know a lot of people don't like them on my channel, but this thing has been pretty amazing. Now this has a, a LTE slash option for 5G later on. This is running, I have a SIM card in it. It also is a three to two aspect ratio. It's also got a really nice display, a 2K display, QHD plus, I think, display. It's a 3.3 to 2 aspect ratio. It's obviously a touch display. It also has a pen that I just dropped, a pen that charges magnetically to the side here, or actually connects right here, and you can see it there. Um, it just goes to the side here. And I'm gonna be doing a video on this. I know some people don't like the Chrome, but this has got to be the best Chromebook there is. This is from the Dragonfly, and the Elite Dragonfly has been great so far. So uh, very, very nice. But again, I wanted to show you what a three to two difference between this and the other one. So we could bring in this one, and we could see these two here side by side, and this will show you how much taller. And I think when you're consuming online stuff, when you're doing cloud-based computing, this is going to be better because you'll get more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. What, yeah, this is typical of any uh, two-in-one convertible. So the, the hinges are pretty good on this, but you will notice a little wobble uh, in any um, two-in-one convertible uh, that you see because of the way the hinges are designed. Not using a pen on that. No, and I'm also shaking it a little bit. But you do, you'll, you get this with any, and again, it's a little bit taller, so you'll, it might just move a little bit more. That's something to be aware of, of course. The Graphite 13 Plus on the website looks very high-end, but on the video, it's just so-so. So on video, I say, okay, so I, I've, I've seen it in person. I've used it, obviously. Uh, this, is the, the gra this is not the Graphite. This is the Platinum. Uh, this is not the Graphite, for those that are wondering. The Graphite, if you go to Dell's website and go to my video, I show you the difference between the two. It's darker. It's more of a space gray style color. Uh, and it's actually worked out pretty well. We've got 92 of you. It's been a great live stream, by the way. Uh, thank you for the two very generous Super Chats, one from Robert and the other one from Jordan. Very, very cool stuff. I appreciate it. Well, I almost fell off my chair. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and it helps goes to finance all this <laughs> because, <laughs> well, this one, I, these two I don't, but this one I paid for with my own money. All right. So uh, let's see. Microsoft, uh, let's see. Potato Gorin is saying um, Microsoft, uh, let me get that right there. Surface are one of the few that have three to two on all devices. Yes, that's one of the things that a Surface has is a three to two. It's going to be that taller display. I love it. You see it on the laptop Go 2 that I recently reviewed, laptop 3, laptop 4, Surface Pro 8. Uh, all the Surface devices have a three to two for the most part that I can remember. But yes, all three to two, and I'm a big fan of three to two. And I think one of the reasons that the Surface line exists is to show other OEMs what's possible. So they made the move very, very early on to three to two. All right, so uh, I will point out that the Surface Pro 8 and the SLS or the Surface Laptop Studio are rock solid for Slim Pen 2 by design due to their different kickstand modes. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, I have my Surface uh, Surface Pen 2 that I have here. Uh, I use it uh, all the time on the Surface Duo 2 that I have, and then, of course, any Surface devices that support it, I use it. It's been great. Andrew, what do you think about the 2-in-1 laptop's durability? Well, it just depends on who's making it. They're all good. I mean, look, I have one right here. This one is it's going to be very durable. I mean, the, the, the materials made, the metal used have been rock solid. Uh, the design on this has been very good. So it just depends on who's making these and, you know, as far as uh, quality control. And again, when you're making these in multitudes of, of, of large numbers like Dell is, you're going to have some sort of... Uh, a few percentage or very minute amount that'll have some issues. It's just the way it is. Apple's the same way. It's just the way it is. Um, the 1280p on the 13 plus smokes the M2 in both the M MacBook Pro and the Air. So yeah, even the 1260 did better on the multi-core. I didn't go for the 1280p. Uh, I probably should have now that I, in hindsight, I don't know why I didn't, but the 1260p certainly for my needs is more than enough. And it shows over 9,000 score in the multi-cores, tells you everything you need to know. It's definitely capable. That's for sure. And again, the 1280p, it would be even a little bit higher clock rate on that, a slightly higher clock rate. Um, so that's going to show even more, I think, performance potentially again, but iCracker saying that, that it's definitely better than the M2 and both the MacBook Pro and the Air. We'll see, man. You know, I'm going to get the Air in the studio. I'm not going to get the M2 MacBook Pro. It's the same old, uh, tired design that's been from six years ago. And I don't think there's any reason to go with that right now. Are the keys, which are so close together, prone to typo errors? I thought it was, but actually the more I've used it, I've gotten very accustomed to it. I find it very good in terms of tactility as far as the uh key travel has been good on this very comfortable I, I really really like it i didn't expect to like it but i'm really liking it so that you know tells you everything you need to know how many laptops do i own so i own the macbook pro that i am i'm live streaming on now you can see it here this is my 2019 uh macbook pro 16 i also have uh this dell right here of course, the one I just uh, did my video on, and this is what this live stream's main subject is. And then, of course, I have my 19, my my Dell XPS 15 9510 from last year in that Arctic white finish, which is really gorgeous. I still have that, love it. And uh, those are the ones I own. And as far as all the others, they're review units on loan from the brands, as I mentioned. So I always mention whether I buy it or I get it as a review loaner, uh, but I'm always upfront in terms of that. According to iCracker, the M2 and the new Pro has been shown to overheat and throttle, and that's with a fan. The M MacBook Air is done for. So if for heavy sustained loads, of course, with having active cooling, such as the MacBook Pro, that's going to be better than the Air. Uh, if you're doing long sustained periods of workload and heavy sustained workload on the Air, it's going to throttle down for sure. So that's pretty interesting that the new Pro, or the new Pro as he puts in quotes, um, I'm curious to see it. I will be reviewing the M2, uh, the M2 MacBook Air when it is uh, released. I won't be the first, of course, because all the MKBHDs and all them will get it before I will. But I will check it out and I will compare these, uh, obviously, to the Macs and we'll see how that all plays out. But so far, the initial benchmarks we've been seeing, the multi-core is better on this so far. So 9,000 9, plus I'm getting consistently on this uh, Mac, on this uh, XPS 13 plus 
very impressive. 28 watt CPU, the Core i7 1260p optional availability and also 1280p, which is a higher clock rate. Uh, so there you go. Max Tech is the channel that revealed that, by the way. Okay, good. I'm glad to find that out. Um, so the Macs are not uh, not all that they're cracked up to be. Is that what I'm seeing? Again, I haven't checked it out, so I don't know. But based on some of the early reports, not doing as well as expected. Maybe is that is my my getting that wrong? But that's the, what I'm. That's my takeaway so far. We'll see. We'll see. All right, if the Surface Pro 9 has a 14 inch, I would go for it with no doubt. So there's, they're still at the three to two, they're the three to two aspect ratio. And I think the Surface Pro 9, we're at 12 point, what are we at now? 12.8, is that what we're at? I, I can't remember, or oh, we're at 13 inches, I'm sorry. We're at 13 inches from the last upgrade on the Surface Pro 8, when, well, same thing as the Surface Pro X, we saw that move. Uh, 14 inch surface pro would be an interesting device to say the least, because some people want that extra real estate. That's for sure. So according to Lee, and maybe you can shed some light on this, the MacBook air is not done for overly dramatic. Apple is the way to overly dramatic. Apple is the way too powerful and generally comes through with fixes, repairs, etc. Again, I don't know. Again, we're going to get these into the studio. We're going to see what the, What's going on, right? The proof is in the pudding, as they say. Uh, I hope the Surface Pro 9 knocks it out of the park. Me too. I'm a big fan of the Surface line. Those videos do very well on my channel. So I'm looking forward to checking it out. Just not, not only because of the views, which I like, but I do it because I like the line. I'm just a fan, as I am a fan of the XPS line. I know some people are not. And I love the ThinkPad. So I can like more than one thing, people. So uh, we're going to get that ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 10. I spoke to Lenovo. That's coming very soon. So we have 54 likes. We have 89 of you watching. Uh, can we get that thumbs up, people? Get this like ratio one to one because this will help uh, promote the lap, the video, and get it spread out over YouTube. It'll help me out, and I really appreciate it because uh, I, I really like the channel growth. We're approaching 127,000 subscribers. We hit over 28 million views on the channel. I want to thank everybody for uh, the support, and they've given me over the years, that's for sure. According to iCracker, there are a few videos out there, with and it's all over Twitter, that the M2 overheats and throttles compared to the M1 from two years ago. Now, in all fairness, and I think we need to hold on from judgment, of course, because let's see if Apple fixes this through a firmware update. And like we said, with Lee said, maybe it'll it'll be remedied. But that is not good so far. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's see if they can remedy it. Uh, it happens. And let's see if they can fix it. All right. Personally, I missed the 17 inch screens. I had one. I had, remember, I had the old MacBook in 17 and would be more attention to a larger size screen laptop. One of the things I absolutely love, by the way, is my XPS 17 that they sent over. It's not mine, it's actually Dell's. I'm sending it back, but I'm going to compare it to some other things. 17 inch to me is great for those that are creatives that want to do, um, Things as Photoshop, Lightroom, video editing, color grading, having that screen real estate, especially on those really good crisp IPS displays that Dell does, uh, really good, especially the 4K plus uh, resolution on that. Really, really good stuff. According to my Marcel Haber, do you show some testing with Photoshop, Premiere, Blender, et cetera, your full review? It would be nice to see how fast it is in rendering and editing. I can do that. I don't, you know, I'm my videos are long enough as it is. I'll try to do some more. I'm constantly adding stuff to them. So stay tuned. I will be upgrading a lot of what I'm testing and so forth, uh, how I'm doing it, just trying to make everything better. Just not trying to stay stagnant, right? Trying to always improve. We got 63 likes, a little bit better. Now, as far as uh, this video or this live stream, we just hit an hour mark about a couple of minutes ago. So really good so far. Don't want to go too long, but let's see what other comments and questions. So he misses the 17. Um, music production is great on a 17. Just watching movies is awesome. I agree. I used to have an old MacBook Pro 17 inch from years ago. We're talking 15 years ago. And that was really good. I know, it, I know this may be hard, but is it possible to test Ubuntu Live USB support? I can do that. I got to start doing more. Uh, I got I got to start doing stuff with Linux. I'm going to, I keep talking about it. And I just run out of time, uh, but I'm going to have to make it. Um, I know Lon does it on his videos and stuff. I got to start doing it too. Yeah, no problem. Are you going to get the X-Men Carbon, the X-Pad? Oh, 
<laughs> the thing FedEx went carbon. Yes, Jeremy, that I spoke to, I just spoke to, that is a coincidence, I spoke to my contact over at Lenovo, and that's the next thing up, actually. I asked about the Think the ThinkPad Z13 and 16. I want to get those in. He says they're coming. They're on. They're scheduled. But first up will be the X1 Carbon Gen 10, which I'm a big fan of. You know, I've reviewed every pretty much every iteration of it on my channel. Uh, does very well on my channel. So, yes, it will be coming. And I'm also getting that. Uh, I hope I don't butcher your name. Uh, Jaika Shan, yes, the ThinkPad X13S, that's going to have the brand new Snapdragon uh, Windows and ARM processor. Uh, very good so far. Andrew, are you excited about nothing phone? I have, no, I'm, as far as exciting, I feel nothing. <laughs> Am I excited? I feel nothing. <laughs> no, absolutely not. That is the mark. That's a marketing joke, that phone. Are you excited about that crap? I'm not. But everybody can enjoy the design or whatever. But the specs are very disappointing from what I've read so far. Again, I haven't used it. I will not be checking that out, I don't think. you know. And if nothing wants to send it to me, I have nothing but admiration if they do. But we'll see. <laughs> nothing phone coming, not coming to the U.S. Oh, there, there you go. It's not even coming to the U.S. tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> Elbow cough. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, Jordan. Um would I want to review that? And, and by the way, I'm going to have to start doing more phone stuff, but it seems I'm only doing laptops. And I enjoy doing phone reviews, although I used to do a lot of views on my phone reviews. The last three, four years, we've pivoted, and now it seems that the laptops are my audience. But I still like to do phones. Yeah, it's expensive for what it is. There are better options out there from what I read. So we'll see. For the Rex is saying for the XPS 13 Plus, do you think the 3.5K touchscreen is worth the extra cost? So here's the thing, and I touched upon it already, and we'll talk more about it in the upcoming video. The extra money you pay for the OLED to me is worth it only if you're uh, into watching movies on the screen, which I am, and you're doing any kind of creative work, the extra pixels, the extra... The screen brightness, or not the screen brightness, I should say extra color accuracy, extra coverage of the color gamut does pay dividends for sure. Now, that being said, if you go with the full HD+, Plus, which I think most people will be perfectly fine with, you're going to get at least a couple of hours, maybe three hours more in battery life, maybe more, I don't know. And it's an IPS display, it's supposed to be gorgeous. It's also touch display, so you're really not losing too much other than that extra crispness, the extra sharpness you get with the OLED. But again, the battery life for some is going to be the deal breaker. So go for the maximum battery life if that's important to you. Again, everybody's use case is a little bit different. So you, you really have to take that into consideration. Hopefully that helps. Did you ever test the 12 Gen U series like the 1265U? I just tested the 1255U in the Inspiron 14 2-in-1. That video should be dropping tomorrow. Uh, and the U processor. So I'm going to reserve on saying what I think about it so you can watch it. Uh, that being said, I think that's my second foray. The first one I saw was on the X1, um, the X1 Yoga Gen 7. I didn't do my full testing in that, in that video. I will have that full review in the next day or so as well. That one is not going to be as powerful. These, these U processors, these 12, 12 Gen U processors are not as powerful this time around. And, well, they're not as powerful, I should say, as the P series is what I was trying to say. They're better than last year, uh, marginally better, I think, than what we saw from the uh, Tiger Lake last year. So we'll talk more about it in the upcoming video that I have on these. Uh, the, the U series is good, but I'm a much bigger fan of this uh, P series. These 28 watt CPUs are really good, especially this one here in the XPS 13 plus. Oh yes. Am I, uh, yes. Sharkfin. I'm sorry. And my comments being suppressed. Jeez Louise. Okay. Sharkfin. I'm sorry. Uh, let me try to get some of your, here we go. My apologies. How freaking ironic that the flagship laptops are somewhat shrinking in size while smartphones keep getting bigger. Cue the Alanis Morissette song. <laughs> um, I have not been ignoring you, Shark Tech. I just missed, I just trying to randomly go through the, the chats. My fault. Uh, yes, the flagship laptops are somewhat shrinking. Look at the, I mean, look at this thing. This thing is amazing as far as the size is concerned but the smartphones seem to be getting bigger. Yes, that is a very uh, observant of you to say that. Yes, for sure, I agree. 
The ThinkPad, the ThinkPad T14 Gen 3 with the AMD Ryzen 6000 will be nice. So I'm going to hopefully get one of those as well. Again, I, I think the order that's coming into the studio, just so you know, uh, first up is going to be the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 10. Then I should be getting hopefully the ThinkPad Z series, either the 13 or the 16. I don't know which one's going to come first. And then we'll see what else comes in. No problem. Thanks for shouting. You got it, Shark Fintech. I, again, I didn't ignore you. It was not done on purpose. I'm a one-man band here. I'm doing the best I can, but I appreciate you coming once again, of course, checking out the live stream. All CPUs are good nowadays. Yeah, I, that's a very good point. Uh, I like, you know, I've always said this, innovation spurs competition, right? So great stuff from AMD, great stuff from Apple. And Intel, which I thought was stagnant, and I called them out during the pandemic and everything, has really improved their processors quite a bit, obviously, with these 12th gen processors. Started with the 11th gen. We're seeing big, big gains here, especially in multi-core performance with these 12th gen processors. Now, this one, like I, I mentioned earlier, has the Core i7-1260P. That is a 28-watt CPU, 12 cores on this. That's eight efficiency cores and four performance cores. And so far, I think the performance is really good, especially for an ultra portable thin and light like this one is. In the far distance future, the laptop will fit in your pocket and you use your 16 inch phone to talk on. <laughs> you, not, you're probably right about that, Randy. You're probably right. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh at you, but I'm, I, I see the irony in all this. Do you think that the XPS Plus design will make its way into the larger size? That's a good point, Jordan. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I think this is a test run for them. They're gonna, I guess they wanna see how well this does. Now, here's the thing. The, the, one on, oh, the one back there, the 15, the 9520, is very specific to content creators. So I don't think they might go with this design, to be honest with you, but you never know. I think one of the reasons why they won't is because, number one, they want to be able to put, a, obviously, the GPU in there. But I think creators might not like having this capacitive row and the keyboard. I don't know. But it's a good question, and I guess time will tell. But... Uh, right now, we don't get it. They just did it on the 13 Plus. Well, we'll see, though. Of course, you never know what happens in the future. Andrew, what's happening with Microsoft laptops? Haven't seen them on your channel for a while. So there's nothing really to talk about um, on that as ter in terms of anything new. I did do, by the way, two weeks ago, uh, I think it was two or three weeks ago, uh, the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go 2. So I did do one, although I got a lot of blowback from everybody saying, why did I review that? Because A, it didn't have the backlit keyboard, which I pointed out. And there's a skew on that that nobody should buy. I don't want to rehash all that. Check out the video. It's on my channel. I go over all the pros and the cons. And I'm glad I reviewed it, by the way, even though I didn't get the most amount of views. I think I got almost 10,000 or whatever. But I wasn't expecting a lot on that, but I wanted to cover all sorts of offerings, especially from Microsoft. I bought that one, by the way. Uh, so I took one for the team once again as well on that one. Are you going to be reviewing the XPS 13 9315 or the XPS 13 9315 2-in-1? So yes, I, I hopefully will be reviewing. I, I know for sure I'll be doing the 2-in-1 because that's a new device, a Surface-style device. Uh, from Dell. I definitely we're going to review that. As far as the 9315, I am planning on it. If I have to go out and buy one, I might do it because of the new colors. Uh, thing I'm not crazy about that I was uh, checking out the specs and that it has soldered uh, RAM and soldered, soldered um, SSD storage. Now, the RAM, I understand. It's the same thing in the 9310, which is different though because the 93, I'm sorry, the 9320 allows you to upgrade the RAM, the SSD rather, Whereas on the 9315, it's soldered in. Now, it may be a little bit thinner. We're going to see. Uh, hopefully, I'll get one in. We'll see. Um, with so many laptops already re reviewed or lined from Asus, Lenovo, HP, Dell, especially the 12th gen or the 6000 series, any plan to do a br brand or cost-wise summary ranking videos? Thank you. Yes, I'm hopefully we'll be able to do it. I just want to, I still need to get some stuff in from HP to make a comprehensive list. And I think I'm going to start doing a chart that we're going to start keeping and something I've been working on behind the scenes. I'll debut it soon where I'm going to actually rank all the laptops based on scores, uh, based on the performance of each other. We'll have a ranking system. So when it comes time at the end of the year to do my end of year summary of what I think 
has been the best and the worst of the year will have a good ranking and system in place and it'll make a lot, my life a lot easier. It's a lot more work uh, from a day-to-day standpoint, but I think it's well worth it in the long run. So we'll see. Yes, I plan on doing that. So uh, somebody's bought already the 9i and super excited about it. Burjuresh Patel. All right, my friend. Good stuff. It's a good laptop. Future breakdown on the graphics cards, RTX, Ryzen, Arc Series. And oh, by the way, thank you, Randy. Uh, the Arc Series is my next target. I want to get something from HP on that. I think it's the Envy that has the Arc graphics, or is it the Spectre? I can't remember. One of them has the Arc graphics. I'm trying to get a hold of one. Stay tuned. That will be coming. I, I'm curious to see the performance on that Arc. I'm hearing good things. But again, until we get something in and I actually run my own benchmarks, uh, I won't know, but the, the, the hype has been there. The behind the scenes word has been pretty good. So we'll see. According to Rex, you don't understand why these laptops have only eight gigabytes of Ram. Will they ever give advice on the Ram? And some brands, uh, such as Apple charge 200 plus extra. Yeah. Apple's notorious for upcharging and all that stuff, uh, nickel and diming their customers. I'm not a fan of that. None of the other OEMs do that. We got another super chat from Tom Byrne. Five, $5 super chat, fairest reviewer I've seen. Thanks, I appreciate that, Tom. That's very, very nice of you to say. And um, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Everybody's been so generous tonight. I'm glad uh, we're able to get this live stream in. I don't know how much longer we're gonna go. We're already at an hour and 15 minutes approaching an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, we have 81 people, 72 likes, so getting a little bit closer to that one-to-one -one ratio that I've been looking for. So that's been pretty good. That'll help me out. So hit that like button. Even if you don't like me, just hit it twice, okay? All right, it is a, it, it is Spectre with Arc. Oh, hit, the, hit the thumbs down twice, by the way. That's what I meant to say. Um, it is Spectre with the Arc. Yes, that was the one that I'm trying to source uh, stay tuned on that one. I want to see how these arc graphics specifically are going to, um, there you go. Go Tommy, go Tommy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, a Ram upgrade from eight to 16 is expensive in the most cases. Um, that's why I love when you can upgrade it yourself, by the way, people, uh, and case in point are the ones that the one I just did the Inspiron 16, which I love, by the way, I think it's a solid two in one. I got my editor's choice for good reason. And one of the reasons is upgradable RAM, upgradable SSD. There are two RAM slots. There's SSDs and that is SSD and that is upgradable. And the Wi-Fi card, Bluetooth card is upgradable. I love that because it gives you options, right? You're not tied to it. You want to, you need more storage as your needs grow. You have that option. Same thing for the video that I'm going to be releasing, hopefully tomorrow, the Inspiron 14, the, the 7420. Now I did the 7415 with the AMD processor earlier this year. So now I'm going to be doing the next one. So we'll see how that's all going to go, uh, the 7420. And that also uh, has upgradable RAM, upgradable SSD, and upgradable uh, Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth. Um, iCracker thinks the 13 Plus has Intel Arc graphics. I'd be, it'll be a dream machine. Um, if yeah, I would love if this had that. If that, I don't know the thermals on that. That's the thing that you know I have to question. Uh, we'll see again. Again, I haven't checked out it. I haven't checked it out yet, but we'll see. Thank, great point. Thank you. Uh, I was just telling Nick, the great point on that. Thank you, uh, Shark Tech, Shark FinTech rather. Um, yeah, I, I agree, Tom. I think the Arc stuff is pretty cool, and uh, it's it's something that I'm really looking forward to checking out. Any information about the Acer Swift X 14 or 16? You know, I got to reach out to Acer. It's about that time. We need to see something on that. Uh, I haven't gotten it from them, so we'll see. Um, I have something coming next week, but I'm under an embargo on that. I can't talk about it, but that's going to be pretty interesting also from a good brand. You're going to like that, I think. You'll see something next week. 2018 Iris, XE, Iris Graphics. I don't know what we're... I'm, maybe I'm out of touch with this uh live stream as far as what's being said um what about the 2022 hold my beer arc series again randy i think these arc graphics are going to surprise a lot of people but again i i could be wrong again i haven't tested it out early word is it's looking good we'll see we'll see all right shark fin tech is saying these oems will get away with the lowest ram ssd specs as long as they continue to tolerate it fight the power that's right you tell them. Yeah, so 
and, and a good case in point, it's even more egregious, is that there's a four gigabyte model. Was it the four gigabyte? What did we, what did I say to stay away from? Was it eight or four? But anyway, whatever the entry level one was for the Surface Laptop Go 2, stay away from it. It's not the one to buy. Get the one in the middle or the upper end one because that one was ridiculous. I don't remember. It was a four eight. I don't think, do they still offer a four? I think they do. Actually, they, thank God they got rid of the EMMC uh, storage, but they went to the SSD, which is good. Although I would avoid that entry level one because it still offered four gigabytes of RAM, which in 2022 is just a joke. I don't know what Mike, you know, Microsoft wants to be able to say, hey, we have one for 599 or 490, whatever it was, the entry level number. I guess it was 599, right? So that's the one to stay away from. Yeah, four grid is fine for Windows 11. <laughs> You're kidding, right? <laughs> 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 okay i hope you're not being serious i know you're not keep the cost low yes it will keep the cost low but that's not a um a model anybody needs to buy uh never buy a laptop with four gigabytes of ram yeah and, you know, i wouldn't buy a phone with four gigabytes of ram let alone a laptop with four gigabytes of ram <laughs> uh never right so there you go okay so got a little bit of a sneak peek. We'll talk more about this Dragonfly very, very soon. That was a very nice laptop so far. Uh, hi, is, any, is it any good for developers, this one? So I don't know. I'm not a developer, and I always get that question. I, always, I never feel comfortable answering that. I'm more of a creator. I can answer things with video editing, gaming, uh, everyday use, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, but this doesn't have a discrete GPU. If you need a discrete GPU I, and you love the XPS line and you're more into that, you like that line, then look at the 15 or the 17 even, which has even a better GPU, the 3060. But as far as... Um, as far as the this one, no discrete GPU, so it's hard for me to recommend this for a developer. I think you need something with more horsepower. Correct me if I'm wrong. If any of my developers are out there are into this, you'll know and let us know. So this is the Dragonfly. So this is the brand new Dragonfly, but it is the Chromebook version, uh, and I'm absolutely loving it. Now, this is actually a Chromebook I would use, and I would like to run Windows on it through Parallels. I want, I'm going to check that out very soon because this thing is pretty amazing. The hardware is amazing. Three to two aspect ratio. Uh, I'm going to have a video on this very soon. I gave you a little bit of a sneak peek. I wanted to show you the difference in size. This is a 13.5 inch, 13.4. This is 16. To, this is three to two. This is 16 to 10. You can see the difference. So Pine 2, uh, Pine to Pine 3 has been using and developing Unity applications on the 9310, which is last year's model, and should be also capable of that. So that's a good indicator since he's doing already on that. So I'll take that uh, for what it's worth. I think that's a, a good indicator that, yeah, maybe you can use the uh, XPS 13 Plus. I just never feel comfortable since I'm not a developer. So I couldn't talk from that perspective or give my opinion from that perspective. Three to two inch, 13 inches, amazing. Had it with my Huawei MateBook 13. Yeah, I love three to two. Uh, I saw that, I remember I reviewed that uh, MateBook, MateBook Pro from last year, which that gorgeous green color. I have something coming very soon, but I can't talk about it. We'll talk very soon on that. Windows 11 can run one gigabyte of RAM without constant paging. Also, right now it uses 572 megabytes of RAM while I'm writing this. Okay, all right, that's good, Tom. Uh, let me bring that to this so everybody can read that. So you're saying, so what you're saying, Tom, and I know I was making a joke earlier, but I didn't mean to disparage anybody. So you're saying you can run it. It actually is efficient, a Windows 11. Okay. I, 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 but for most people, and I would, I would say, don't buy anything with four gigabytes of RAM, not because it can't run. It can run. It, don't, it may not run if, as great as you'd want it to run, right? And there's really no reason. And plus, you want to future-proof it a little bit. That's my, I mean, that's my take. So when Microsoft releases a Surface Laptop Go 2 with four gigabytes of RAM for $599, pay the extra $100 or $200 and get the eight gigabytes, which should be the absolute minimum here, and that's even cutting it sometimes and then going to the 16 if you have to. Uh, I would prefer to get 16 where you can. And I'm going, I got 32 on this one, by the way. I got 32 on this one. So um, it tells you that you, you know, you want to be able to buy something and use it for a few years. You don't want to have to become obsolete right out of the box, although they are going down in value as soon as you take it out of the box. Kind of like when you drive a, a new car off the lot. 
A laptop uh, from 2010 will probably be able to run tw uh, Windows 11, but it's not something we deem to be usable. So again, whether the, the issue is, is whether it could run. Yeah, it could run. Will it run from a practical standpoint? Will it run efficiently? Will it run enough for you to be able to use it? Is it usable? And that's a good point, Pine to Pine 3. Uh, Shin Fant Tun is saying M2 MacBook Air and XPS 13 Plus, which should I choose? Again, I don't have that Mac M2 MacBook Air. Nobody does, or nobody's publicly said they've had it. Um, so I will reserve judgment till I see something from them. But if any indication with that M2 MacBook Pro that has already been um, in the hands of reviewers, uh, which is not showing as good performance as this XPS 13 Plus, that's a little concerning if you're the MacBook uh, fan because this one did, um, and here, by the way, you can see the fingerprint scanner in action. It worked pretty quickly. Uh, this has got over 9,000 on my on the Geekbench 5 test. So, And we can see it here on uh, the multi-core. So I got 1,592, but I got almost 1,700 on the subsequent test that I showed, and then 9,124 on the multi-core. So that's definitely better than the M2 so far that we've seen, at least on the MacBook Pro uh, 13 M2 version that just came out. M2 MacBook Pro old, right. Hi, Andrew. Greetings from Argentina. Uh, uh, buenos noches, my friend. Uh, I bought the HP Elite Book 845G8. Thanks for your review. Thanks for your reviews. I've always helpful. I, I appreciate that, Nicholas. Thank you so much for um, saying that. That's very nice. Yeah, it's over 3,000, Kiran. Um, 1592, but on the subsequent test that I did, this this is uh, this is the same one I think I think I just showed you. Uh, it got almost 1,700. Let me go back to this. Hold on. And then I did this one. This got 8982, but it also got 1692. I think I had something running in the background when I was doing it. So again, uh, average over 9,000 so far in the number of tests that I've run on it. So that's been pretty good. Now, let me see on the R23, what did I get? I'll show you in the video. Oh, yeah. So this is another one to show you. And again, if you, I'll, I'll just point it out. I'll, I'll make it bigger here. Look at this. And the 1527, okay, that's single core sustained load, but 9,028 9, is an excellent score for the multi-core. So very, very nice. And that's really, really impressive, especially with the R23. Uh, according to Nick 013, does the XPS 13 Plus have the same display as the XPS 13 9310? From all intents and purposes, yes. I haven't seen a difference between the two. I think they're using the same display, the same resolution, same OLED, and that's a good thing. It's a really special display. It's really good. What about the MSI G27 Titan laptops? I'd love to do it. I do have an MSI laptop coming. We'll talk about that very soon. I have it here, actually, but I haven't really done my testing on it yet. That's coming on the next few days. I know I have a lot. I have a lot of backlog right now. I, I apologize for those that are people that are waiting for certain uh, reviews, uh, but I am a little bit behind. I think I got a little bit overwhelmed with stuff. I was supposed to go to Germany, a little bit update. I'm not going. I'm not going to Germany. Long story, I, I'll talk about it another time. I will not be going. However, I will be reviewing whatever I was going to see. I already have one to show in a video that I'm under embargo. We'll talk about that soon. Sorry, I can't talk, talk about more, but I will not be going to Germany as I thought I was next week. I know you're doing your best. Thank you. I appreciate that, Pine to Pine. I mean, I really do. All right, so we have 91 of you watching. It's looking good so far. Um, okay, I think I'm going to have to remove that other one when we're done, the one that was started. Again, I figured it out. We can't do, and I don't know if it's from YouTube's back end, they changed something, but uh, I think the reason we had such troubles the last couple of times I've live streamed with 1440p was because I think they must have done something because I was able to do that in the past, but there was a big sync issue, and I'm not sure if it's my my um, my settings or what have you. But when I went down to 1080p 60, we're good. So I'm just going to start doing that. Previous mic sounded better. So let me know. I'm still working on it. Uh, are you doing any post processing? Or sure. Yeah. So here's the thing. I still need to get. I think I'm going to have to get a cloud lifter on this. I'm using it with the. Let me see it here. Again, I'm still testing this out. 
So I'm using it with my Rodecaster and I dialed it in. I, I did my research. I think the settings are right, but I think I definitely need to do a cloud lifter. So I think that's something that this mic does require. So we'll see, but is it terrible? Let me know. I'm going to try antelope. Okay. I'm going to look more into that, but you know, so I'm doing, you know, best. So if you think it's not sounding as good, uh, maybe I can go back to the other one, but I'm, I'm not going to give up on this. This is supposed to be a really good microphone. So, you know, I'm going to maybe have to get that cloud lifter. We'll have to see. So, uh, but again, tell me if it's not sounding good. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we could do to fix it. First time I'm using it. So we'll see. Not terrible. Okay. All right, but I want it to be good. <laughs> so I want it to be good. We'll see. I'm going to see how this all, I'm going to watch the replay just like a normal person would watch it. And let me see how it sounds. And then I thought I had it dialed in, but you know, I could always, is it too low? I can maybe lift it. And I need the, I, I definitely need the cloud, the cloud lifter. I definitely need it. Mike sounds fine. Okay. No, but I definitely, I definitely, but not rich. So I think we can play with this because this is a very capable microphone. I just need to get the cloud. The, I think we need the, um, the what do you call it? The cloud lifter. Um, sounds good. Okay. Great sound. Okay, good. Your favorite laptop of 2022. Ooh. Uh, I love the 9i from Lenovo, the Yoga 9i. Really, they hit a home run on that. Loving this, but again, I still need to do my full review on this one. Performance has been very good, but that 9i did great. I think I got 10,500 on the on the Geekbench multi-core on that one, that blew me away. And that, and I love the design changes they made. Rounded edges on that one, very comfortable to hold. Uh, OLED design, they brought an OLED option back. Again, still too early to tell. I got a lot more laptops coming, especially from HP. So th this is not by any stretch set in, all said and done. Loving this 13 plus as well. So, But as far as the two in one, I'm really loving that 14 inch as well, the 9.9. I prefer the OLED simply because the OLED to me is the way to go. What's my favorite laptop the last five years? Ooh, that's a tough one. So the last five years, uh, that's going to be a tough one. Oh, boy. There's so many good ones out there. Um, one of them, and you might think I'm crazy, the HP NV15, the Spectre X, no, the HP NV X360, the 15 inch was one of my favorite, although I would love a better display on that one. That was the only thing holding me back. Um, the HP Spectre X360, the 13.5 or the 14, whatever they're calling it nowadays, uh, is another good one that I like. So that's a really good one. Uh, and of course, my Dell XPS 15, the 9510 from last year and the 9520 for this year, although I love that Arctic White from the 9310, is also very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Yoga 9i looks gorgeous. That upcoming Yoga looks great too. So Yoga 7, right. So there's a lot coming up on this channel, people. I got uh, so many things uh, and, and views are up. And whether you're a fan of the XPS or not, you know, Dell, a lot of, you know, some people don't like Dell. I understand that some people love Dell. Uh, I just go with what comes in and I judge it for each one on their own merits, whether or not. Um, and I get a lot of comments, by the way, and this sort of bothers me a little bit. I try not to make a big deal out of it, but I get a lot of comments. And I'll give you a good example on this XPS 13 plus, right? Um, I got this one in. And people were upset that I even reviewed it. Now, I'm a tech reviewer, especially a laptop reviewer. Are you telling me that I shouldn't review the Dell XPS 13 Plus, a flagship from Dell? It's got to be representative versus the HP versus Lenovo. How can I say no to this? And I personally bought this, but why would I not? Why would I alienate certain segments of my audience? And because another segment doesn't want me to do it. And these people are criticizing this laptop for without actually even, number one, even seeing it in person, and number two, actually using it or even buying one and using it as their actual laptop on a daily basis. So people are just judging this right off the bat without actually using it. I'm using it. Uh, yes, I did criticize them for removal of the headphone jack. I did cr criticize them. It's a little bit sharp on the edges here, but I'm loving the haptic touchpad. I'm loving the keyboard on this. I would like this to be able to be turned off when I'm watching movies. But other than that, those are not deal breakers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and that's it. What's the problem with 
you reviewing it. Again, I don't know why people were upset. I had some people that were actually upset at me, like telling me, why am I doing this? I'm doing the, I'm, I'll be doing the Z13 very soon, as I talked about it earlier. Uh, why would I review it? Of course I'm going to review it. Even if I didn't like this laptop in terms of uh, this laptop, but I actually do like it, uh, I would do it objectively. And of course, they have to be represented in terms of Dell, HP, Lenovo, the main uh, staples here on my channel. So why would I say, no, I'm not going to review it just because a certain people didn't like it? The views are up. The proof is in the numbers. Uh, views are way up on these videos. I'm pushing over almost 30,000 in a five days or seven days, five or six days, whatever it's been. And then I or the live stream is pushing 10,000 views and the um, and the actual unboxing video is doing really well. So these are doing very well. So why would I not talk about it? And even, it, yes, they made some controversial moves on it, but I think for the most part, they hit a, an absolutely gorgeous laptop here. They hit a home run in terms of the aesthetics, the display, the size, and the overall build has been excellent, at least for me. That's what I've been seeing. Some of the heat... Some of the some of the best heat in pro wrestling is negative heat. Keep doing what you do, AMD. People are watching. I appreciate that, 12 Lionheart. Yeah, I, I just never understood why, you know, and then and then I got the Apple fanboys coming in. I'm using an Apple here. I'm live streaming with an Apple. So I, don't call me an Apple hater. I'm not. However, I get these uh, Apple fanboys are saying that there's nothing better than the M1, the M2, and that there is nothing. Well, hey, people, this did better on the multi-core. This actually outscored the MacBook Pro 13 with an M2 chip uh, on the multi-core. This scored over 9,000. That's something that the MacBook Pro did not do so far, at least I'm not aware of. So, you know, I don't understand that. And then... You know me. I love AMD. Uh, it's my namesake, for God's sakes. Uh, I love their Ryzen 6000 series. I just don't get enough of them into the studio because they're not available. It's not my fault. I would review more of them if, if I would get them. We have a pandemic, people, and we have a supply shortage. And the, the economy is in the sh shithole right now. We're going to head into a recession, from what I understand. Uh, gas prices are... Uh, over $7 some places. This is absolutely ridiculous. So people don't have money to spend and yet they're tuning in. So I'm, I'm very happy on that point. But the bottom line is, is that I'm going to keep re reviewing it. I'm not going to let those people affect what I review. This is what I do. And yes, I'm going to get the haters. I'm going to get the Apple fanboys and the AMD people that don't want me to do any Intel, God forbid. Although Intel has made some great strides here with the 12th gen. Proof is in the pudding, right? So battery life will not be as good as the Apple. That's been a very efficient chip from day one. But again, I don't have any of the M2 stuff in just yet. I'll be getting them in. We'll see. I'll get the M2 MacBook Air. I'm going to order one. I won't be the first one to review it, but that's fine. And by the way, uh, every time I do an Apple review, it doesn't get any views on my channel. I guess people don't come here for that. Uh Lee Goldstein is saying, I find myself totally confused when I try to compare which is the faster processor for the money. AMD 5900 versus the 5800 versus the 12th gen. I just don't know. It just depends. Cooling, efficiency, all that stuff plays into it, which is better, you know, pound for pound. You know, it just goes to show you the variety, the competition out there. Um, I mean, I get so many laptops, it's hard to keep track of what I'm even reviewing sometimes. Uh, so... The, the reality is we have a good problem on our hands. We have some, they're making some really good laptops. They're making really good products and they're just getting better and better. They're getting faster. They're getting more efficient. Uh, these are good problems to have. And people criticize me. Why don't I ever give a low review? There hasn't been a laptop that really is terrible. To be honest with you, when you look at objectively, they've gotten that good, even in lower price points. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we're going to see better and better stuff. And I think the, the improvements are coming. Do you know when you will get the new XPS 13 non-plus? I don't know. Um, it's just when Dell can send me one or I, maybe I'll go out of pocket again. We'll see. We'll see. Apple pushes PC, so it's good. So Apple... Apple's done an amazing job with their M1, the, the ARM chips, and I think that's helped out in the industry in general. It's caused AMD to up their game. It's caused 
Intel to up their game. And so who's going to benefit? The end user, the consumer, you're going to benefit from this because the innovation, the competition spurs the innovation. And I think that's good. Why is the RAM uh, coming in soldered more and more than before? Uh, they want to get thinner and lighter. They want to get thinner and lighter. And you can see it here. Look at this thing. Now, would I prefer to have it a little bit thicker, have a bigger battery and put in expandable RAM, you know, RAM slots? Of course. Um, I would prefer a little bit of mil millimeter here and there. That wouldn't be a problem for me. Uh, but they want to get thinner. They want to get lighter. They took away the headphone jack. No more USB-A port. But you do get the two Thunderbolt 4, although one is being used when you're um, actually using this device. So... You know, there are compromises to be made when you get that small. And then, of course, the heat issues are going to be uh, something to take into consideration. How do you cool this thing when it's so thin and light? So they are getting thinner and thinner, and they're skimping on upgradability and stuff like that. I really don't know why people criticize you for reviewing the XPS 13 Plus. There's still the XPS 13 without the touch bar with a normal touchpad. And I said that in, earlier, although one caveat on that, and it's, maybe it's not a big deal for most people. It might be for somebody like me because I like having the expandable storage. You don't get that on that one from what I understand. But having said that, you could still buy the one from last year and it probably can get it on sale. And they're still offering that uh, for at least for now. So that was a good one as well. Um, the XPS 13 non-plus or the Samsung Galaxy 2 Pro 360. So the my biggest gripe with the, the, the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, the display is 16 to 9. I'm not a fan of that anymore. The very reflective display and non, uh, no, no option for a higher resolution. You just got the full HD and that's it. 1920 by 12 by 1080, not even 1200, 1080. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeehaw, it wouldn't be. <laughs> oh boy, we're already an hour and 40 minutes. I didn't mean to go all this long, people. But we're, you know. And then again, I have the new microphone. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix, I mean, well, I'm not going to fix it. I'm going to dial it in a little bit better. I'm going to get the cloud lifter. It's going to probably be help out. This is a good microphone, but we'll, we'll, we'll dial it in. We'll get it right. Yeah, Samsung is one for the uh, few companies that didn't switch to 16 to 10. I'm surprised, to be honest with you. I thought they would already have made that move, but they didn't make that move. All right, people, I think we're at a time that we're going to have to call it a live stream. This has been a good one. I'm going to use a little bit of different music to go out on. And I want to thank everybody, especially those who gave super chats today. Uh, that Jordan and, of course, Robert. And then there was one other super chat. Uh, but I want to appreciate so much the support, everybody. And I definitely will get this figured out, cinematic. Uh, cinematic. And have a good night. And everybody, I will see everybody in the next video, of course. I have a lot coming. So stay tuned. See you soon. Take care, everybody. And thank, well, before we go, one more super chat from Edwin B. Thank you, my friend. See everybody. The next one, we'll see you then. Did you fans, did the fans come on during casual usage? Not really. It's been very quiet. We'll talk about that in the full review. Bye-bye.